Hello everyone, Martin here, and today I've got a $500 showdown between the US, Canada, and the UK. Are you ready for it? With the CPU Canada, I'm with the AMD Athlon X4 950, same as last episode, because we are stuck in the Stone Age in Canada, and we like igloos. Okay, the UK, AMD Ryzen 5, 2400, 3.6 GHz, quad-core processor, I am not on coke, SMT is supported on this, which is fantastic, so you got 8 cores, 4 threads, that's that's awesome that's awesome okay so four logical and four threads beautiful eight cores good for video editing good for processing good for gaming mint it's not the best though it's all around boxers Cinderella man story and for the US and with the AMD Ryzen 3 3200G 3.6 gigahertz quad core processor now the difference between the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 3 so the Ryzen 5 in this case supports SMT whilst this Ryzen 3 does not. But compared to the last build, it is better because it is a newer version. So the US technically wins against their old build, but in this case, UK takes the W and Canada takes the biggest L. Talking about Canada, Gigabyte GA8320M S2H, same motherboard as last time. It, it, yeah, it's not great. Well, I mean, it's good enough for now. Two two slots for 32 gigabytes of RAM is good enough for now. You don't need more than 16. Realistically, that's just my opinion. Pff, throwing it out there. Pain alert. Boom. So, four gigs is good enough for now. It's not good compared to the rest, though. UK, Corsair Avengers LPX, 8 gigs DDR4, 3000 megahertz RAM. And for the US build, the Crucial Ballistic Sports LT, same thing, 8 gig, 3200 megahertz RAM in this case. So US will take the win, UK takes the, the, the second guy, and then uh, Canada, sadly. We won't even say it. For storage, guys, we are talking about an uneven race. Canada does take an L here with a 240 gig SSD from A data whilst the UK has a Kingston A400 and the US has a Team GX2, both equally same hard drive, so, yeah, I don't know, like, they're not the same, different makes. What I really feel most comfortable with, I'll just give them both a W here, so a tie in this case. For the graphics cards, for the US, I went with the MSI Radeon RX 590, and then for the UK, I went with the XFX Radeon RX 590 as well. So both 590s, both eight gigs, yeah, both capable of playing 1440p, maybe 4K for older titles, great graphics cards in general. Uh, they both take a W here because Canada, as we all know, stuck in the Stone Age here. The MSI Radeon RX 570 8 gig is what we got. It is an 8 gig, so you're getting pretty, pretty close to uh, what we want. We're just missing a few more digits here. But the 570 will be good enough for 1080p and at high and ultra settings in 1440p on older titles. For the case, now this is a looking competition, boys and girls, but we got different cases now. They look pretty much the same, but different, okay? Because the UK is still the same old, because, you know, they never change. The UK just never changes. Um, <clears throat> Canada has a Rosewill, a cheaper version of the American, though. Actually, it's a little more expensive. You know how Canadians buy the cheaper versions of the more expensive? You know, how, that's how the Canadians work. But the, the Americans pay cheaper and get a better looking case. In my opinion, the side panel window looks mint AF in that picture. So I, I do trust it. And for drumroll, please. Power supply word goes to the UK and Canada. Oh my God, it's a tie, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! The British nations. The almighty English colonialists win it. I mean, you can, the Americans are also colonialists, but they all have an EVGA 450 watt 80 plus bronze certified, which is just enough for this, but I would really recommend a 500 watt power supply. So it's, it is it is crucial. But anyways, guys, that's it for the video. All around, the UK takes a W here. Um, US trailing behind, and of course, the... Canadian team just takes another L. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. Tell me who you think who won. Please don't say Canada.